I want to make sure that I acknowledge the sponsor of the show, Teach Henley, because Teach Henley sent me this new pack. They sent me the new Teach pack, so I just literally pulled the paper out, got it out of the mail, and I started going through it, and I got a little bit more excited than I should. You know what I'm saying? So they did send me the Teach pack, and I don't even know what this is yet. So I'm assuming this is what you get when you first uh, order your teach. And I don't know what this is. Oh, this is dope. This is absolutely dope. Is this a nail kit? Ladies, get this for the fellas. Fellas, don't wait for the ladies to get it for you. This is free. This just comes with it. 30% off your first order plus 20% off for life. Literally. Oh, snaps. I didn't know that they were sending it like this. Real talk. So this is the nail kit that they sending you. All right. So now you ain't looking like a dusty dusty. This is a free gift straight from Teach. For the people that ordered the Teach, they got the small one for the little hands like mine's. They got the big joints for your toenails. And then uh, they got the joints at the bottom too. You know what I'm saying? For y'all that's a little bit more crustier than usual. All right, so that's one of the free gifts that Teej got inside of the pack. And then, uh, what is this? It says, squeeze a quarter size amount of Teej Hanley body wash on the center of the wet bristles. Lather, scrub, rinse, and repeat for the perfectly satisfying wash every time. So that's inside of there also, right? Ooh, I can get my rubber ducky on right here. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Teach for sending me that uncomplicated skincare for men. And then uh, what we got in here? We got the actual Teach pack, right? So this is the normal Teach pack, but then they gave me the super size joint for the people. They wanted me to show the people exactly what they got when they ordered that, that first Teach pack when you're getting your 30% off your first order. And then you get your free gifts. You get two free gifts and then the 20% off for life. So the 20% off for life is a new thing. and um, Dang, I ain't even got my keys on me to open this up. Maybe I can use the, the little nail clipper thing. I ain't got to buy no nail clipper for my new joint downtown. And then you get all of the all of the washes, all of the scrubs, all of the AM, the PMs, and all of that stuff. So you got the whole thing inside of there for you to make sure you take care of yourself. But you got to make sure you take care of it every day. Right. We don't want to miss days. We don't want to be looking like dusty dusties. It does not absolve you from being able to make sure that you brush your teeth, brush your teeth. It don't fix the teeth problem. Don't fix you ironing your clothes. Don't fix you being able to take care of your business. But it absolutely makes sure that your skin is phenomenal, even when you go in between shaves. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Teach Henley. We absolutely appreciate you. Thank you for continuing to hold us down. Uh, I might do an official teach commercial, but I like just talking authentically to the people. I like giving the people the authentic look of what it is that you're dealing with. And I want you to hear from me personally, because anybody can do that little pitch and they can make some little videos. But very few of us can actually speak to the products uh, of exactly what it is that you're supposed to use. So, yeah, teach Hanley 30 percent off your, your first order and then 20 percent off for life. That's the Anton Daniels pack, 20 percent off for life using any other teach pack. Make sure that you go ahead and let that go. Um, and make sure you tap into the link. It's in the description and take care of it, all right? What's going on? It's Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. Thank you for tuning in for another edition of the Millionaire Morning Show. <laughs> it is Wednesday, hump day. We halfway through the week, ladies and gentlemen. Halfway through the week, it is hump day, meaning that it is time to really, really turn it up before you turn down on the weekend, Wednesday, April 10th, 2024, year of our Lord. What up, friends and family? What's up, OG Rihanna? What's up, A.R. Smitty? True to myself, Michael Anderson, your car, K. Cooper, Blama, Sam the Guy, J.P., Everybody that's in the building, I have to preface this live stream today by telling you that there is going to be a lot of disturbing information, images, uh, but we got to get to it. The news is the news. The money is the money. People are people. 
Um, some people are evil, flat out. What up, Mindset? What up, Sabrina? What up, Big Sucks? You know, I got to uh, first acknowledge uh, Quentin. Let me give a round of a round of applause for my dog, Quentin, that was live streaming with me last night. <laughs> Couple different things before we get started. Number one, ladies, please, for the love of God, Stop saying that Anton does not hold men accountable or I only go into the women. You and your emotions. What up, Purple Haze? What up, though? You and your emotions. Like, for example, if you if you watched the live stream last night, you know, I think it's the people that just spot check and they only watch the stuff that go viral. And that's normal. I get it. That's normal. But <clears throat> I had a young man that called up last night and, he looked nice and spiffy, and I think that the expectation was that I was only going to go one way because of the way that he told the story. But whenever somebody calls into my shows, and we're going to do this on Wednesday night because I think that I'm, I'm going to have an unpopular live stream tonight. I'm going to just let you know because I have the capacity to be able to do it. we switching it up, and I'm going to have an unpopular live stream tonight, and I'll get into that in a minute. But I had a young gentleman that called up last night on After Hours, and we was having a conversation. And he thought it was just going to go one way. And I'm like, nah, fam, you wasn't loyal. You wasn't loyal. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. I'll throw some timestamps into it later on today because we wind up live streaming. I haven't live streamed for four hours in a long time. I have not live streamed for four. Poor Quentin. Shout out to Quentin. Quentin was a soldier with me last night. He said, I'm riding with you till the wheels fall off. <laughs> Poor Quentin. I know Quentin probably had to get up and go to work in the morning, and I kept y'all up on my schedule because I got y'all working the way that I work. And so I live streamed from like 10.30 to like 3.30 or 2.30 in the morning, and I ain't even getting to bed till 3 o'clock in the morning. And poor Quentin was just up there with me. And to be honest with you, I was ready to go for another segment. And I said, no, I got to get I got to get my people to bed. People was up there riding with me, had almost a thousand people still watching with me almost at three in the morning. I said, my people love me. So shout out to everybody that hold me down. Shout out to everybody that's always rocking out late night. People, y'all should appreciate it. Truck drivers that was on the road. I kept y'all up last night. Midnight shift, graveyard shift. Yeah, we got to it. But stop saying that, that it only gonna go one way. Today on Wednesday night, I think I'm going to have an unpopular live stream because it's much easier to put me something salacious in the title and then go in. But I realized last night after talking to the young gentleman that it's a, a, a missing component of all of these conversations that's happening online. Then it's the application, right? We talk about holding people accountable. We talk about how you should operate within a marriage. We talk about what standards are, what to look for, how to vet. But we miss the application portion. And I'm very excited to have this boring, subjected, but phenomenal content live stream tonight. Because I really, really want to let y'all know. And I want to give y'all all of the information that y'all need in order to be successful, all right? Um, that's all nonsense, wealth building journey. I get into that, get into that tonight also. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Arnett Richardson. Shout out to Arnett Richardson. <laughs> Hit me off with the five ball on Cash App. I appreciate you. I also want to give a shout out to my dog, Mike That Dude. <laughs> shout out to Mike That Dude. And my dog, Michael. Shout out to Michael on Cash App. Also holding me down. I appreciate you, big dog. And we're going to go ahead and get started with the show. Now, again, I'm going to preface this show by saying that there's going to be some disturbing information uh, from multiple different stories, and we're not going to censor it. We're just going to get right to it. And if they say that this has got to be 18 and up content, then it got to be 18 and up content, but we got to get to it, right? Uh, I wanted to, when I seen y'all sending me all of these articles about what was happening over in Chicago and the police and everything like that, and I decided not to do it yesterday, but I wanted to wait until today because I wanted to make sure that we got as much information as we possibly could uh, to mine through it and make an informed decision, right? So we got a lot going on, right? A lot happening, a lot of conversation. We definitely going to get to it. And man, my birthday is in three days. This is crazy. I 
never thought that I would make it to be 40. I'm 41. I didn't think I was going to make it to 41, let alone possibly knocking on the door of 42. Super blessed. Super, super blessed. I almost pulled out my camera yesterday and showed y'all some new stuff that I had going on. And I said, nope, 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 nope. I'm living my life offline. Living my life like it's golden. Living my life like it's golden. I said, I'm going to talk about what I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to live the rest of my life offline. So I just kept it to myself and to my people. And uh, and it's so funny because even people that know me or people that's a part of my family or stuff that's not a part of my close, close inner circle um, family, they call me and they be getting emotional and stuff like that. And they be like, oh, my God, I can't believe this happened. I'd be like, hey, 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 chill out, chill out, chill out. I know you're watching a vlog and stuff like that, but. Yeah, man, I'm moving a little bit different. So let me read a couple of super chats and then we're going to go ahead and get started with the show. Also, Sam Saylor says, I got your back, big dog. Sent that super sticker. I appreciate you. I like Jill Scott. Jill Scott is a freak. Um, Young Wells is in the building, says, for that dope show last night, salute. We working. We working. Amen to that. Anton, I'll be 44 in May. Shout out to McCole. You look at everything. You look all bit of 24, baby. All, all bit of 24. Not 44, 24. I like the mindset of the 44, but I like the skin of the 24. You know what I'm saying? All right, y'all. Y'all ready to get started with the show? I'll be reading Super Chats throughout the show. We got a lot to go over. So let's go ahead and get into it. Quick hits. <clears throat> Quick hits is a segment of the show that we don't think that it necessarily takes for us to dedicate an entire segment to it. But we definitely want to keep you guys informed on what's going on out in these streets. So without further ado, Lyft driver was drugged. A Lyft driver was drugged, kidnapped, and raped. Be careful. Check it out. 10 alarming details about a rideshare attack. Good evening, I'm Russ Spencer. I'm Courtney Bryan. Investigators in Alpharetta say a Lyft passenger drugged, kidnapped, then raped the driver last month. Fox News' Rob Durienzo is live from Alpharetta PD headquarters with new details tonight. And Rob, you spoke with investigators. Yeah, that's right, guys. Good evening to you both. An unbelievably disturbing series of events. It ended with that woman, the Lyft driver, waking up in a hotel room. She had no clue where she was. Her car was gone. There was a Lyft driver um, who was given a patron a ride. Uh, to a local area restaurant. Alpharetta investigators say that patron was 32-year-old Demarcus Johnson. During the ride, they say Johnson and the woman driving for Lyft connected. The two engaged in conversation, um, agreed to have a drink with one another, um, at which time the victim uh, doesn't remember and is unable to account for the events that evening. Cops say at some point on the night of March 11th, Johnson drugged her. Her toxicology uh, report came back with um, prescription narcotics uh, that she's not prescribed and that she reportedly does not take. Investigators say the victim woke up the next morning in a hotel room unfamiliar to her. Her car was gone and so was Johnson and police say she realized she was raped. Cops say they worked with Lyft, tracked down cell phone records and retraced their moves that night. We worked with Lyft, um, and then we also worked with uh, local area restaurants and hotels uh, that they uh, visited throughout the evening. Last Friday, nearly four weeks after the horrific ordeal, Alpharetta police arrested Johnson on charges that include rape, kidnapping, and aggravated assault. Lyft called the incident, quote, reprehensible, adding, we have been in contact with the driver to offer our support. Additionally, the rider's account was permanently removed from the Lyft platform, and we assisted law enforcement with their investigation. And tonight we've learned that Johnson is behind bars in Gwinnett County on separate failure to appear charges. He's also wanted on holds out of Henry County as well as Lake City Police Department. Y'all got to be careful, man. You know, I was a... Uh... I was evaluating something because somebody was on a coaching call with me yesterday and they said, yeah, man, I can't find love on this app or I keep running into these people and stuff like that. And I said, bro, don't you realize that these applications are not and I'm going to bring it around to this lift conversation. I said, don't you realize that these applications are not built for you to find love? 
He said, what, is you, what do you mean? I said, well, if you find love through the application, or if you do something that actually benefits you through the application, and you find love, then you actually break the business model for the application itself. It's designed to keep you continuously going back into the application itself in order to find a thing that's not best for you. I'm going to need you to catch that one. The apps that you then find the people that you date or you interacting with, often at times in every single way possible, is the worst thing that you can ever use. And a lot of times what we're using now and what I'm seeing now is that for example, Instagram for a lot of people is now just a dating application. It's not even, it's a way for you to figure out who it is that you want to fly in and fly out in order to bust them down. That's what it is. And now, what I've been seeing and what I've been hearing a lot of times, because I talked to another person the other day, and they, say, they said they met somebody that they interacted with on Lyft. And I said, what? When I was Uber. And then I'm looking at this story going down. Making sure that y'all wind up interacting with each other and all of that type of stuff. You will have a drink. Next thing you know, you got a date rape drug when you do the toxicology report. And you find yourself bust down with no car. And a dude then ran off with your stuff and he then took your, he took your innocence. He took your innocence. And ladies, I don't know how many more times I got to say this. It's already dangerous enough for us. It's already dangerous enough for us. I know that a lot of y'all are doing what y'all have to do in order to survive. So you're driving the apps, you're doing stuff like that. If you can, if you can find yourself a halfway decent dude that want to do right by you and is willing to build with you and give you his last name and hold it down. I'm telling you, I said this the other Wednesday when I jumped off of Harley Initiated and I said, listen, I know y'all keep talking about toxic masculinity and Anton is saying that and Anton is saying this, but in real life, I don't know any woman that want to be out here driving Lyft at night. I don't know any woman that want to have two jobs. I don't know any woman that want to be out here competing with a person like me that's willing to do whatever it is that I got to do in order to make sure that I get everything for the people that I care for. You do not want to be out here trying to figure it out and thinking and operating like you're a man. You don't want it. I wouldn't want it for my daughter. And in the same way that I would not tell a man to go and marry or get with a woman that's not best for him is the same way that I'm going to care for you, ladies. And I'm going to tell you that you don't want to be out here suffering. I'm going to treat my ladies that I love the same way that I would treat and tell my daughter. I wouldn't tell my daughter to go out here and suffer. I'm not going to tell you to go out here and suffer. If you can, and find the person that's best for you, not the person that want to bust you down the most, and align yourself with the person that is supposed to be going in the direction that you're going in. Make sure you tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. In addition to that, all right, suspect is granted multiple $100 bonds. Hey, where is that at? Why is that not showing? Give me a second. Got a little bit of technical hic hiccup. There we go. Suspect is, is offered multiple $100 bonds. This is what you got to look forward to if you're out here in these streets. You see this person? This person is young as piss, early 20s. Multiple different mug shots. You know what he do for a living? Kick your butt. Check it out. On tonight's breaking bond, a suspended Harris County felony court judge grants $100 bonds to a 21 year old man accused of terrorizing three young women while on probation. Fox 26's Randy Wallace is joining us live from the courthouse tonight with the latest in his ongoing series. Randy. Yeah, Anthony. Now, before his suspension last February, 228th Criminal Court Judge Frank Aguilar set some of the lowest bonds we've ever seen for charges of kidnapping, sexual assault, and tampering with a witness. February 2023, 21-year-old Frank Jaroge is sentenced to deferred probation after being convicted of assault with intent to impede breathing. Just two months on probation, and Jaroge is charged with assault and violating a protective order. Assault and an intent attempt to impede breathing. First of all, that's a wild charge. 
So you trying to suffocate somebody. You trying to choke somebody out. Assault, so you beat them up with intent to impede breathing. <laughs> I ain't never going to jail. I already know it. I ain't never going to jail. Lawyers is too good. Listen, if these dudes is, is impeding breathing and beating y'all tail and they still getting out on $100 bonds, I ain't never going to jail. I ain't never going to jail. I don't even worry about getting pulled over no more. I just do what I want to do in the car. Police be sitting right there. What up, though? They be like, Anton, what you doing? I was like, oh, I thought tickets was only a suggestion for people that got resources. I thought tickets was, listen. What you gonna do, stop me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Tickets is only a suggestion for people that got resources. That's a suggested, suge hey, that sign right there, slow down, that's a suggestion. That's not a requirement. Nope, I ain't never going to jail. If he could choke somebody out, get out, do it again, get out, do it again, and get arrested by the time that he's 21, 22 years old and got 10 mug shots, and he's still out here running the streets, I ain't even got to worry about it. I'm going to be out on the street all day, every day. All day, every day. If he ain't even got no money and he young, and he got a record and he walking around, you can forget it. I'm going to be out here in these streets, man. Normally, if you're charged with offenses while you're on probation and you get a bond the bond gets increased his bonds kept getting lower judge frank aguilar set bonds at just 100 dollars for violent felonies like sexual assault kidnapping domestic violence and witness tampering seven times aguilar set deroge's bond at just 100 dollars I don't know how in God's name you cannot take a look at this and say, dude, you're a threat to public safety. You're a threat to these women. That's crazy in itself for the things he's done, not just to my relative, but to other young ladies. This man who we are not identifying is related to the woman who, when charging documents, was repeatedly terrorized and abused by Jeroge. Choked her on a few occasions till she couldn't breathe, bit her on quite a few occasions. Uh, bit her toenail off at one point. Court documents state Jeroge told the woman, it's your death wish today. DA's office files a motion to adjudicate his probation four times. Judge Aguilar refused the DA's motion to end Jeroge's probation and send him to prison. Last January, Aguilar became a felony defendant himself. Aguilar was actually charged in Galveston County New Year's Eve with his own family assault charges. After the judge's arrest, the DA's office asked Aguilar to recuse himself. You shouldn't be uh, hearing cases involving domestic violence when you yourself are facing a charge involving domestic violence. Aguilar refused the request. Last February, he was suspended from the bench by the State Judicial Conduct Commission. At what... Y'all do know that a lot of these judges are voted on, right? When y'all go to the poll, this is why it's important for y'all to pay attention to who's on the bench, who's running. Most people, I would say 99, 99% of the population, 99% of the population does not know who's even on the bench. Y'all don't know nothing about these judges. Y'all don't know their background. Y'all don't know nothing about them. Y'all just go through and check it off. And whoever is at the top of the list is the person that get voted in on the judge's bench. Most people have no clue. No clue. These are regular, everyday people just like you. And they are out here controlling your fate, determining who's going to get in and out of jail, who's going to be out here in the street. They, they enforcing the laws. They the ones that send the criminals back to the streets. Man, listen, bro. It's rough. Ladies. It's rough out here for y'all. Y'all advocated for this, and now you got to suffer as a result of it. Now, last but not least, uh, Arizona is upholding a 1864 abortion ban law. I had this conversation with y'all a little bit when I was talking about Trump yesterday. Quick hits, just check it out real quick, and then we're going to move on with the show.
And this morning, there's a lot of fallout from a ruling on an abortion case in Arizona. So the state Supreme Court ruled that a law from 1864 that criminalizes nearly all abortions can be enforced. Robert Moses taking a closer look this morning. What's going on? Rosanna and Kurt, while the ruling applies only to Arizona, it could well have national implications. Think about it. In a tight presidential election, as this one is shaping up to be, any one issue could galvanize enough voters to swing the race, and abortion could well be that issue. It is a dark day in Arizona. Democratic Governor Katie Hobbs decried the Arizona Supreme Court's 4-2 ruling. The justices, all Republican appointees, said an 1864 law banning nearly all abortions is now enforceable because of the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Physicians are now on notice that all abortions, except those necessary to save a woman's life, are illegal, the court ruled. The justices put their ruling on hold for 14 days to allow for a lower court to hear more arguments about the constitutionality of the 1864 law. Planned Parenthood Arizona, the plaintiff, had argued that other measures, including a 2022 state law banning abortion after the 15th week of pregnancy, may be 1864 law moot. But the Arizona Supreme Court didn't buy that argument. Reaction from the White House was strong. Millions of Arizonans will soon live under an even more extreme and dangerous abortion ban, which fails to protect women even when their health is at risk or in tragic cases of rape or incest. President Joe Biden said in a statement, this ruling is a result of the extreme agenda of Republican elected officials who are committed to ripping away women's freedom. The Alliance Defending Freedom, a conservative group, celebrated the ruling and said it will protect the lives of countless innocent unborn children. But Arizona's attorney general, a Democrat, promised not to prosecute doctors for performing abortions, though individual district attorneys could decide to prosecute. The ruling could galvanize voters to head to the polls this fall. To the people across Arizona who are concerned about the future of abortion rights in our state, who are worried about their bodily autonomy, who don't want to see the freedom of their wives, sisters, and daughters restricted, you can make your concerns known at the ballot box, and I encourage you to do so. So uh, look for this. The main reason why I played this and the main reason I had a lot of different things that I wanted to share with y'all, but the main reason why I shared this uh, in particular is because there's going to be a lot of swing states in the upcoming 2024 election, okay? And they're going to play on your emotions, and they're going to highlight this. You're going to see a whole lot of conversations uh, about things like this, like abortion, and they're going to play on your emotions for things that you can't also control before you get into it in the first place. And I know that this is a passionate conversation for a lot of people, but in reality, there's a lot for you to be able to control, and you don't necessarily have to subject yourself to the emotional responses that would then cause you to, to vote one way or another for something that you control versus something that you can't. Look at the policies. Look at the things that's the most meaningful. For whatever reason, I am not going to vote based off of what state or what is happening is in my state from an abortion perspective. I'm going to vote both based off of the policies that's the most meaningful in my life and for my family. Do not, do not be distracted by conversations around things that you can already control yourself if there's other things that's more meaningful, meaningful for you and your family. All right? All right, let's continue, y'all. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. That's Quick Hits. Uh, let me switch over really quickly. I did not mention the sponsor of the show. I did in the beginning of the show as far as playing the video. But shout out to Teach Henley, 30% off your first order plus 20% off for life. Sponsor of the show, Teach Henley. We love you. Thank you for always holding us down. Also, on top of that, I also want to give you all a shout out to all the new bag chasers. <laughs> Got lots of new people that's a part of the Patreon and the bag chasers. Shout out to the bag chasers. Uh, we appreciate y'all. If y'all not a part of the Patreon, the link is in the description. It is, it is an awesome group. Absolutely awesome. We do a lot of work. We give a lot of game. It's a lot of conversations. Check it out. If you want to go in the direction of a group of people that's going in the direction that you want to go in and make sure you tap into the Patreon link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. All right. So we got a few things that we want to uh, cover right now. I was trying to contemplate which one I wanted to start with first. 
Dexter Reed, who is the guy that was allegedly shot at or fired upon 96 times in Chicago, or Andrew Holmes and Tiffany Tiffany Henyard. So we're going to go with Andrew Holmes and Tiffany Henyard, all right? So yesterday, and then we're going to get straight into the Dexter Reed conversation. Yesterday, um, I reviewed videos and content surrounding Lori Lightfoot. Lori Lightfoot, for those of you that are not familiar, is the former mayor of Chicago who was ousted for Brandon Johnson this year. Now, Lori Lightfoot, as a part of the diversity, equity, and inclusion in the Alphabet community, was recently hired as a popular pick to go and investigate over in Dalton. Dalton is the small city with less than $30 million budget outside of Chicago that Tiffany Henyard. Who's Tiffany Henyard? Tiffany Henyard is the city girl mayor that's basically running Dalton, and she's the township supervisor of Thornton Township. She has a salary combined of more than the mayor of Chicago himself, but they are operating at a deficit over in Dalton to the tune of above $7 million. Basically, they're running it into the ground. And in the meantime, they also wanted to hire Lori Lightfoot to investigate what was going on over in Dalton and Tiffany Henyard to the tune of $400 per hour. $400 per hour hour which if you were work 40 hours a week and 52 weeks a year is the equivalent of something like 700,000 I believe 700,000 plus dollars a year anyways neither here nor there so Dalton is a a cluster f to say the least I mean it is absolutely positively the worst thing the worst city ran in America right now in my opinion that's in the public eye um, but in addition to what was happening with Lori Lightfoot, right, we all knew that there was some stuff that was bubbling under the surface, but the, the main news couldn't really mention it because they had to wait and make sure that all of the authorizations, but we knew who was being accused of what. We knew what you did in Vegas. We seen what was happening. All of the conversations was happening behind the scenes. It's almost like the police trying to chase you now but they can't really charge you even though everybody in the hood know the ones that's all doing the crime. That's what was happening over in Dalton. So as a result, this is the thing that's hitting mainstream news right now. They a little late to it, but we understand it. First of all, Tiffany Henyard was booed at a recent meeting at a township meeting at Thornton Township uh, and challenged during that meeting. Really quickly before we get over to Andrew Holmes, check it out. Everybody want it to continue to be a show and not really show facts as it relates to what's really going on in our township. And here we go, another contentious night for Tiffany Henyard at the annual Thornton Township meeting. Henyard is township supervisor, but tonight she was challenged by board members and the public. She was booed loudly at several points during tonight's meeting. Henyard said it's not fair for residents to ask so many questions in the township when she says they don't ask them in other communities. It's always fair. Everything is fair in love and war. But, so she was at the Thornton Township meeting, which is completely different than Dalton. Dor Dalton is the city. Thornton is the township. She's the township supervisor, and she's the mayor of, Thor uh, uh, of Dalton, okay? So in addition to that, recent bombshell reports is starting to hit the news about what happened in Vegas involving Andrew Holmes and her. Check it out. There is some new fallout tonight to a story we've been following closely out of South Suburban Dalton. Mayor Tiffany Henyard's former assistant and a Dalton police officer have both filed a civil lawsuit against the mayor and trustee Andrew Holmes. Much of that lawsuit centered on what allegedly happened on a business trip to Las Vegas last May. NBC 5's Regina Waldrop has spent six months trying to track down this story. She has a closer look at the new complaint. Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard, Trustee Andrew Holmes, both now the focus of a civil lawsuit. Everybody that's named in this law lawsuit should resign from their position immediately. The lawsuit was filed by two people, Henyard's former assistant and Dalton police officer Byron Miles. It accuses Holmes of assault and battery and Henyard of retaliation. The incident allegedly occurred during and after an economic development trip to Las Vegas last May. 
On that trip, Henyard and a handful of village and Thornton Township reps, including her former assistant and trustee Holmes, NBC is choosing not to name the woman. According to the complaint, the woman felt disoriented, lightheaded, and ultimately blacked out after dinner with Holmes. She woke up in the trustee's bedroom physically uncomfortable and with no memory of how she got there. The complaint details a conversation. Wait, 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 wait. Let's back up here. Let's back up here. Let's back up. His bedroom physically uncomfortable ultimately blacked out after dinner with Holmes. She woke up in the trustee's bedroom physically uncomfortable and with no memory of how she got there. Now, now, to have the for, your your assistant. I'm sorry. Let me revise that. Former assistant. Uh, and no, we're not going to say that she was roofied or anything like that. And we're not even going to say that this really happened. We're going to keep the same energy across the board. Same energy across the board. We don't know what happened. All we know is what's being alleged. Okay. But this is what's being alleged. Now, we all know they was out in Vegas and having a good time. Mm, mm, Vegas, baby. Mm, mm, Vegas, baby. Blue Man Group. David Copperfield. Yeah. Usher. Yes, yes. Letting it roll, putting it all on black. Better bet on black. Yes. We don't know if something was in her drink or she was just out here partying. Mm, mm, Vegas, baby. Mm, mm, Vegas, baby. We don't know what was going on. All we know, because I didn't listen. Let me, let me tell you something. I was in Vegas. They gave me that trash alcohol. I was out there like, oh, I was slumped. I was slump slump. I ain't even gonna kid you. I ain't never been that slump. I was so slumped in Vegas. That's how I'm that's why I'm giving her grace. I was so slumped in Vegas. That was the first time that I actually seen Rita ever get mad at me. First time. Hello. Hey, you busy? No. I got a question for you. Oh, Jesus. Okay. What are you all Jesus in for? I just said I got a question. I'm on a live stream. I know. Okay, let's let's do. Remember when they gave me that trash alcohol in Vegas? In Ve yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yes, I remember. That's how I knew you was the one. I said this girl is a trooper. Now, I don't remember exactly what happened. Do you remember what happened? Vividly. What happened to you? What happened? <laughs> you want me to tell the whole, like, everything, or what? What are we doing? You can say whatever you want to say. I live okay, my life so, like an open book. So you were being hard-headed, and you didn't eat like I told you you should, and you ordered that. Um, you, don't have to, you don't have to say what I ordered. You could just skip that part. Okay. Whatever that thing was, and you had them add all of this extra stuff in there. And then we were out just walking, having a good time, and you kept drinking it. And next thing I know, is a little <laughs> disoriented. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. <laughs> you were trying to record a video, and your phone was upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, yeah, I was, I was trying to, yeah, but you was a trooper. You held me down. You got me back to the hotel room. I sure did. You I got took me. Advantage of you. you did what? <laughs> I took advantage of you. I'm filing, a, I'm filing a lawsuit. I'm filing a lawsuit. I'm filing a lawsuit. You don't even remember what happened. So you just admitted to taking advantage of me. We're married. So what? You still took advantage? It's not the same when you married. It is the same. I'm I'm filing a lawsuit. Oh, you're gonna get it your own money back, so <laughs> I'm filing <laughs> I'm filing a criminal complaint. How about that? Sue, sue yourself. Bye. Bye. Let me tell you something. I was in Vegas slumped. 
I was in Vegas slumped. I could I didn't even know what was going on. I said, what is happening in Vegas? No way that I'm out here slumped in Vegas and I'm suffering bad. I was down bad. I ain't even going to lie to you. I was down so bad in Vegas. I was absolutely, positively, 100% slumped. Slump, slump. I said, it, ain't, it can't be this bad. No way in the world, no how. Let me see something. Dang, I don't even know if I had, rec if I had dropped that video about that. Let me see something. Give me a second. I want to see something really quickly. Because I'm just telling you of how it can go in Vegas. Let me see something. No, nah, that wasn't it. I don't think that was it. Is that one it? Oh, it sure was. Yeah, this sure is the one. Let me see something really quickly. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see something. Just want to see something really quickly. Vegas is... And then it start um start messing with you, get a nice little buzz, and you good. You just good to go. You don't need to get pissy drunk in Vegas. You don't need to get none of that. Let's get you a nice little cool buzz, and you straight. They different colors, but did they have them? That's not even a flamingo. That's a duck, right? What are we talking about here? I'm so confused, fam. Ooh, fish. That one is big, though. That's what she said. Yo, I'm not even gonna lie. The beer king is fried, bro. Like, I am in a really great space physically right now. But this, from Fat Tuesday, the 190 octane with the extra shots in it, that'll get you right. Like, it won't get you, like, because clearly I'm not incoherent. Obviously, I can speak in full sentences without any kind of issue or whatever but it'll have you feeling absolutely perfect in a really really great space probably get a refill you can see we're all the way down and obviously after you get some food in you and you get whatever you're gonna eat in you that's gonna you know what i'm saying take away your buzz a little bit but then you get your little refill and you're good to go you straight it's, it's time to keep it moving Reed is coming over. I just want to be regular. What are you thinking? <laughs> oh my God. So this is the Venetian, right? The wind. This is the wind? Yeah. Mm. This is the wind. Ooh, I'm so good. My friends is so we're going to leave that there. Um, I had to get some some Gatorade, some water, stuff. I'm just this is what I'm saying to you. The, the point that I'm making right now, <laughs> I forgot that that video even existed. There's so many videos from the past on my channel. The point that I'm making right now is we don't know. We don't know what happened in Vegas. It was a wild time. It was an incredible time. I black for some reason I blacked out. She wound up getting me back to the hotel room. I have no clue how she got me back to the hotel room. 
But after that part where I was recording, because I was trying to get my video together and my camera was upside down, I said, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm crashing. It's hitting me different right now. I ain't never felt like this before. And so that was a lesson. But the point is, is that <laughs> we went all through that to say that we don't know if she was roofied or she just got really, really, really drunk, okay? I didn't know if that was a duck. I didn't know if it was a flamingo. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if I was at the wind or the Venetian. And let me also say this. When I was crashing out and I woke up, because I woke up, I went and I slept it off and I woke up. And then I opened up my eyes and she's sitting at, she's looking at me like this. I said, what you looking at me? I said, what, what happened? I already knew that I had messed up. Do you know what you did? This is what she said. Do you know what you did? <laughs> I said, I don't know what happened. Boy, let me tell you. And then she started laughing and we started cracking up or whatever. But anyways, let's continue with this story. The complaint details a conversation between she and Officer Byron Miles when they returned from Las Vegas. A member of Mayor Henyard's security detail at the time, Officer Miles in the complaint informed the woman that the trustee told him he had unprotected sex with her in Vegas. Officer Miles advised the woman to seek medical care. According to the complaint, when the woman met with Henyard to tell her about what allegedly happened, Henyard told her if the information got out, she would be ruined and all the work she'd done would be lost. She then... Check this out. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait a minute. He's a legend that what's being alleged in this complaint is that Andrew Holmes, a freaky uncle, had her over in Vegas. We don't know if she was roofy. We don't know if she was just drunk, but this is what's alleged, right? And she woke up in his bedroom. This is what the lawsuit is saying. Andrew Holmes called or FaceTime and was like, ah, <laughs> look who I got in my bed. Look who I got in my bed. Hey, look at me, big dog. Look at this. Oh, snap. So we out there. Look at the look at baby girl in the back. Yeah, we did some things. We did some strange things after the after whatever last night. And then the other guy was like, hey, man with the fro. This man right here below me, what are you doing? No, fam, don't tell me that you did. This is not what we can prove. This is what's being alleged. All right? Everybody was in Vegas. They were supposed to be at the business convention, bring him home business. It was out there on taxpayer dime, making it rain, buying all of this stuff, having a, having a good time. And it got a little out of control. That's what is being alleged. Okay? And with no memory of how she got there. The complaint details a conversation between she and Officer Byron Miles when they returned from Las Vegas. A member of Mayor Henyard's security detail at the time, Officer Miles in the complaint, informed the woman that the trustee told him. Imagine waking up and being in the trustee's bed right here. <laughs> Imagine waking up and you're in a trustee's bed. This is what's being alleged again. We don't know. We got to give them the benefit of the doubt. It's innocent until proven guilty. We're just going over what the lawsuit says, all right? He had unprotected sex with her in Ooh. Vegas. Officer Miles advised the woman to seek medical care. According to the complaint, when the woman met with Henyard to tell her about what allegedly happened, Henyard told her if the information got out, she would be ruined and all the work she'd done would be lost. She now imagine that you out there and the mayor of the trip got the trustee, the assistant, the security detail, I'm trying to figure out why they need security detail in Vegas. Now, remember, when she was in office and what she said was that we need to allocate a large part of the Dalton budget to make sure that we got 24-hour security because it'd be vloggers showing up at my house and stuff like that. Now, remember, we didn't know who Tiffany Henyard was back then. We had no clue who Tiffany Henyard was. Why does she need a security detail? First class, Bubba Gump Shrimp. Partying with the friends and the family. Why does they need? Why do they need an extra paid security detail to go over and party in Vegas? Like we don't know who. Like we knew who they was. 
See how that works? Let's continue. Then claims Henyard told her that she would take care of it and that the woman should trust her. The woman claims she was later put on unpaid medical leave and later terminated. Miles claims he was removed from the mayor's security detail and returned to patrol duty and faced a number of retaliatory actions later on for coming forward as a witness to what he believed was either sexual harassment, exploitation of a woman. An attorney for Holmes told us he has no comment on the lawsuit. At Monday night's village board meeting, four Dalton trustees appointed Lori Lightfoot, Chicago's former mayor and a former federal prosecutor, as a special investigator to look into the Vegas trip and other allegations being made against the mayor. At the conclusion of this investigation, I will provide an assessment of the findings and the recommendations, and I welcome and urge the full cooperation by Mayor Henyard, her staff, all village trustees. The village told us in a statement it's imperative that any third party council hired by trustees fully comply with legislative ordinance standards. At this stage, they do not meet these standards. So let's just put this all in a summary, right? As we see Mayor Beetlejuice jump up and she say, oh man, everybody should comply. I'm making $400 an hour in order to investigate stuff that the FBI is already aware of. Cool. <sighs> Extra security, hanging out in Vegas, taxpayer dime, party, lawsuit, everybody suing her, demotions, allegedly. Lady says she woke up in Andrew Holmes' bed, tells Tiffany Henyer. Tiffany Henyer says, hey, man, you, you listen, you got to put your big girl panties on. You wasn't saying that when you was throwing them back. Mm, mm, mm. When we was drinking in Vegas and you was throwing them shots back, right? Hey, now this is what's being alleged. We don't know if this is true. Hold on, baby girl. Don't you go to the public because this could ruin me. I'm already under fire and they, want, they don't want to see me out here because I'm a black woman. And, you know, they always want to tear down their own for the white man and for the system. And I got to get this money. Mm, 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 mm. Andrew Holmes come back. He just do stuff like normal. Eventually, the girl file a lawsuit or she go to the police and she try to figure out what's going on. And why am I appearing in this bed? Andrew Holmes apparently couldn't keep quiet and he was over there telling people, yeah, look who I'm in my bed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so then she like, wait a minute, you was over there fondling me and using me and, and abusing me? Okay, well then we gonna figure out what's going on. So this is basically how things are playing out. And then eventually it got to the point to where the people over in Dalton said, listen, we want you out. We want you out. And then Anton is now changing his mind and I said, no, stay in, Tiff. Stay in, Tiff. Because Tiffany is good content. Uh, she definitely brings the viewers. I will say that. <laughs> Shout out to Tiff, Tiff, Tiff. Uh, Tiffany is good content. I want her to stay in, but not just because she brings good viewers. Also because you voted for her. You voted for her. And now y'all want to bring in uh, Mayor Twinkletoes. To come and investigate for the findings. This is all one big S show. Horrible. Horrible leadership. Horrible management. Horrible voters. Horrible way to manage the budget. Horrible decision making. Everything is just absolutely positively horrible across the board. And it's unfortunate. Because then y'all gonna blame the system. You're going to say it's the white man. You're going to say it's because you ain't got reparations. You're going to say it's because it's our school system and they ain't putting enough money in. Come and save us. You have your own police force. It's all black. You got your own city. It's all black. You got your own trustees. It's all black. You got your own treasurers. You got your own people. It's all majority black. You got your own system to run and you messed it up. And the show continues. So I'll be here, and I'll be having a good time, and I'll be watching from the back and looking at everybody continue to tear their own city up, and then they're going to blame the man. At least y'all got a new ice rink. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let me go ahead and read the super chat, so then we're going to get over into more important news uh, before we... Uh, before the, the, the stuff hits the fan. Cartez Cookies is in the building. Shout out to Cartez. Says, Anton, I love that bag chaser city you had on last night. When can we per Y'all want that? Y'all want that? All right, all right. I guess there might be some new merch that we might have to get popping. Okay, Cartez. Good feedback. Good feedback. 
Uh, Travis Slay in the building says, Anton, let me find out you have one of them wine coolers at Norbit. Go Norbit. Go Norbit. Go Norbit. Go Norbit. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Said, your wife put Molly all in your drink. He ain't even know it. I think Rita roofied me on a low. Then was mad that she had to carry me back to the hotel. That girl a soldier. Uh, Antonio Watkins says, shout out to Rita Daniels taking advantage of her husband. The bad chaser stamp and approved this behavior. We also approved this Saturday. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm holding myself. I'm, I'm preserving myself. I'm celibate now. <laughs> Jay Johnson says, H, yeah, 8D. Live it up, gang. Every time I'm in Vegas, I go crazy having fun, bro. By the way, chat, y'all were mean to Bentley Fonsworth last night. LOL. Oh, sorry for the Pistons getting whooped last night. Oh, man, I'm so glad that that game is over. Oh, we got one more game, don't we? Because it's the 10th. We got one more game tomorrow. I ain't going to that crap. I already just sold my tickets. I'm getting a pot of that joint. Uh, DP, I will be going to some baseball games this year. So if y'all going to be at some Tiger games and y'all going to be there in the daytime right after the Millionaire Morning Show, come holla at your boy. DP says, Anton's countenance was like Wild Bill from the Green Mile when officers went to pick him up from the psych ward just staring into space. I didn't know what was going on. I was out of it. Michael Anderson says, we don't know Tiff loves a tent. We know Tiff loves a tent. Hey, Tiff, if after you get ousted from being mayor of Dalton and the Thornton Township supervisor and you need a job, come holler at your boy. I got. I think you'll be a phenomenal content creator. We're going to get you over here to Detroit. We're going to get you some equipment set up. We're going to make sure that you're all taken care of. I'm going to be your best friend, and I'm going to get you a bag for it. I always start a podcast. All right, so let's get into more important news. Chicago can't stay out of the news. Chicago can't stay out of the news. Now, let me preface this by saying, A, make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm because the likes is a little low. B, if you're not a part of the Patreon, link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. C, teach Hanley 30% off your first order plus 20% off for life. And then D, Viewer discretion is advised because some of the scenes that we may show may be a little bit graphic, but we got to get to the thick of things to better understand what's happening so we can make a better assessment. Now, I have not watched the videos. We are going to be watching them both for the first time, okay? And then we're going to be objective and we're going to make an assessment. All right. Uh... I'm going to read that super chat shortly, j -Man. So, over in Chicago, <sighs> over in Chi-Town, they got problems. They got big problems. Not just migrant problems. They got big problems. This is the official video. Viewer discretion is advised of what happened with Dexter Reed. Dexter Reed is the young man that was driving the vehicle that the police officers allegedly pulled over. Okay? This is where all of the hoop run and all of the stuff is happening and why they starting to ride over in Chicago. Let me say this before we get into the video also. Hold on for a second. Have y'all noticed, and it can't be just me, have you guys noticed that every single time that it is election season, the same play pops off. It can't be just me. Look, I predicted that this was going to happen. I told y'all that this was going to happen. I told y'all that it was going to be another opportunity for y'all to be out here protesting, saying Black Lives Matter to make sure that y'all file y'all diversity, equity, and inclusion lawsuits, then it was going to happen right at election season. It happens every four years. Every four years. Every four years, it happens. Distractions, something to get you emotionally charged so that you'll stop paying attention to the policies and you'll start paying attention to the distractions every single year. Time. I told you. 
It's going to happen in 2028, 2032, 2036, 2040, 44, 48, 52, 56. It happens every single election cycle. And it only happens during election season. Or at least that's the only time that it's starting to be advertised. Never got so many emails in my life for people saying, yo, Anton, did you see what's happening? Oh, my God. I can't believe it. All right. Let's get into the video. Viewer discretion is advised. Check it out. This is what happened in Chicago. Do not lock the doors now. Open the door. Unlock the doors now. Open the door. Unlock, unlock, the, unlock the, door the door now. Open the door now. Open the door now. Open the door now. Okay, so let me replay that one more time. Unlock the door. Let me slow this down real quick. Actually, K Godfather, if you pay attention, he shot at them first. If you pay attention, it looks like he shot at them first. You cannot tell somebody is successive when you got a pistol in your car, you refuse to comply, and then it looks like they ran away from you shooting first. They start backing up from the vehicle because apparently they seen the gun. Let me play this. Open the doors now. Open the Unlock the doors now. They backing up. You can see them starting to back up right there. They bagging up because they can see how this is playing out. Now, they probably, in most situations, you could probably see, like, if you see a pistol and if they see you pulling a pistol, then they automatically going to start firing. They automatically going to start firing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He he had it coming. He had it coming, bro. He had it coming. After that, it was up in the air right there. Let me rewind this one more time. Let me slow it all the way down. Yeah, that was it. They lucky they didn't get hit. They lucky they didn't get hit. That was it, bro. Yeah, that's it. That's it. He was it was it. It was up from there. It was up from there. You can't sit here and say, yeah, 100 rounds and all of this stuff. After that, it's over. After that, that's it. It's up from there. Let me see what these other videos is talking about. This is Mayor Johnson's reaction for it. They did, Tanya and Terrell, and the mayor calling the footage deeply disturbing, painful, and traumatic. Mayor Brandon Johnson says he spoke to 26-year-old Dexter Reed's family, offering them his condolences. He says he also visited the officer who was shot in the arm the day in the hospital. Now, COPA- So wait a minute, one of the officers was shot in the arm too?
So one of the officers actually got shot in the arm too. The chief administrator confirming today initial reports appears as though Reed fired shots first. So he shot, he fired shots first. So what are y'all going to do? Y'all going to go and protest? They already protesting over in Chicago, I heard. I heard today outside of outside of the, the, the precinct and they protesting and everything like that. She just said it. An official reports confirmed that he shot first. Why would you do that? That's death by suicide. Appears as though Reed fired shots first. Then he fired shots at one officer. Four officers returned fire and allegedly fired 96 shots toward Reed in a matter of 41 seconds. That is what Mayor Johnson says was deeply disturbing. Take a listen. As mayor and as a father raising a family, including two black boys on the west side of Chicago. Oh, here we go, bro. Come on, man. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Come on, bro. I'm personally devastated to see yet another young black man lose his life during an interaction with the police. When someone is shot and killed by police in our city, my administration will lead with transparency. Attempts to withhold or delay information are mistakes of the past, and we have already taken concrete steps to start a full investigation into this case. The Cook County State's Attorney, Kim Fox, says they will conduct a thorough review and investigate this incident. Meanwhile, the officers involved have been placed on a 30-day administrative leave. COPA will also investigate this use of force, as well as the incidents leading up to the use of force. All right, so let me pivot for a second. Let me see what's happening. This is another angle, I guess. And let's get to some breaking news right now. We've been telling you about all morning video was just released within the hour of a deadly shooting of a man during a police traffic stop. Right now, our Chris Ty has seen the video. Joined us right now. Uh, Chris, what can you tell us? It shows. I know you've probably just gotten a glimpse of it, but what would take us through what we do know now? OK, let's walk you through this step by step, Brad. 26 year old Dexter Reed was driving in his white SUV back in the middle of March when police came upon his vehicle in plain clothes. According to a report just issued by COPA, which is the Civilian Office of Police Accountability, those officers came to his car purportedly wearing on a seatbelt violation. That was allegedly the reason for the police approaching Mr. Reed's vehicle. What happened in the ensuing 90 seconds is 96 shots were fired within 41 seconds of time. There is an exchange, and we're about to play this for you. We have edited out some of the vulgarity from the exchange. This shows the officers coming up on Mr. Reed's vehicle, asking him to come out of his vehicle. Scopa today is saying that and I want you to think about this as you're watching it, that it appears Mr. Reed fired first. The video does not make that abundantly clear, but COPA, who has been working through this video over a series of weeks, says that indeed the suspect fired first. That will be the focal point of a press conference between COPA, the mayor, and the state's attorney, which is coming your way in about 14 minutes. But let's get to this video and we can talk about it on the other side. Let's watch. Roll the window down. What are you doing? Roll this one down. Roll that one down too. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He got the pooh shicey mask on? Oh, heck no. And you got a pistol in the car? Nope. Nope. You got the pooh shicey mask. You got the pistol in the car? Nah, fam. Mm -mm. Nope. A lot of people keep saying, oh, man, it's the seatbelt. No. I want criminals off the streets riding around with pistols that feel comfortable enough firing at the police officers. I don't really know what we going here. Oh, Anton got to be the bad guy. Anton got to be the bad guy. I don't want people out here riding around with poo shiesty masks on. Willing to pull out a pistol and shoot at police officers. I'm not really sure where the disconnect is. Hey, 
Don't roll the window up. I'm don't roll the window up. Okay, okay. Do not roll the window up. Okay, do not. Unlock the doors Open now. The door. Unlock the doors Open now. The door. Unlock the doors the door. now. Okay, Open the door now. Open the door now. Open the door now. Oh, six more David shots fired. Shots fired. And that is just the beginning of the shooting. Again, 96 shots fired within the span of just 41 seconds. Copa's analysis of this video indicates that the man behind the wheel there, 26-year-old Dexter Reed, indeed fired first. The catalyst for this stop, which is a little curious here, you don't usually have five officers in plain clothes addressing a traffic stop, but I'm sure that will be something we will hear more about in the press conference, which is coming your way in about 13 minutes. You know, Brad, bringing you back in here, one of the key questions is, of course, what was bringing so many officers to surround that vehicle? This is a gentleman who we understand did have a history in the last few weeks before this shooting, which killed him, uh, that he had brought a, a, a weapon into a street festival. Uh, but whether or not that history plays a part in this incident, and as we watch this, you can see the officer reaching for that handle, asking him to roll down that window. In the background, and I don't know if we could hear it in our clip that we played, you hear another officer saying, do you see his hands? Mm. These are all the things that when we watch these videos, knowing what happens at the end of the line, we look and see what did officers do? What did they know? What could they have expected to know? Uh, so those are the critical questions here. But the number of shots fired, 96 shots fired in the span of just 41 seconds. I want to show you a statement that COPA, the Civilian Office of Police Accountability, just released. Again, they're saying that the catalyst for this was a traffic stop that he was purportedly not wearing a seatbelt, that the officers pointed their firearms, and their investigation confirms that Mr. Reed fired first, and that over the span of 41 seconds, 96 shots were fired. This is one of those classic cases where we just don't know the full picture. Uh, this 26-year-old man, his family says, was a star basketball player, the love of their life, one of three children in this family. Uh, he attended Morton College in Cicero, uh, the questions here are quite long. All we have is that raw material and the statement from COPA. So, Brad, again, coming up in about 10 minutes' time, we're going to hear from Mayor Johnson, we're going to hear from COPA, and we're going to... Let me hear from the lawyer. So we're going to get this from every angle right now. Now, you know that they want to sue. Good afternoon. I'm Chris Ty in the CBS... I'm going to read the Super Chat shortly. Give me a second, y'all. Newsroom, you are looking at the right side of your screen. A press conference about to begin. The family of Dexter Reed, the 26 year old man who was shot and killed by Chicago police 19 days ago in Humble Park. Questions swirling now over the justifiable use of force by police and why he was pulled over in the first place. Let's listen in to what we're hearing from the family for the first time today. Sheila Betty from Northwestern University School of Law and the Community Civil Rights Clinic. We're also here, you can see behind me, the family and extended family of Dexter Reed. We have Nicole Banks, his mother, Portia Banks, Dexter's sister, uh, Dexter's father, Dexter Banks Sr., other uncle, Roosevelt Banks, and other family and friends. Let's take a minute and talk about Reed who Dexter Super Shirley, Reed was. He's 26 years old, played basketball at Westinghouse, led the team to a regional championship. Dexter later became a student athlete at Morton College, where he obtained his associate's degree. His friends and family affectionately called him Buki. Dexter enjoyed playing hoops. He enjoyed healthy eating. He enjoyed cooking. He loved spending time at his sister Portia's shop. Dexter's goal was to be a broadcaster. So let's talk about why we're here today and why Mayor Johnson and State's Attorney Kim Fox and Chief of COPA just gave their press conference. We're here today because on March 21st, something really tragic happened in the city of Chicago. What we witnessed on the video that we watched with the family yesterday was tactical officers, plain clothes, unmarked SUV, wearing hoodies and baseball caps, pulling over Dexter for not wearing a seatbelt.
Here we go. Ambulance chasers. Ambulance chasers. Here we go. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to gear up? Y'all ready to go back and forth? Y'all ready to, to have the diversity, equity, and inclusion conversations? Listen, I'm telling you right now, every single person, all of these people that y'all think is, is the usual suspects, come, I'm telling you, listen, the D.L. Hughley's, the Charlemagne the Gods, the, all your favorite podcasters, they're going to be sitting here having a conversation. They're going to be politically correct. And they're going to focus on all of the things that don't. Why you get pulled over in the first place? What matters if for a seatbelt? I can't believe they get killed. What? They're going to have the same talking points, same conversations. Distractions and then election. I'm warning you. Happens every single four years. Let's, let's continue to hear what the ambulance chasers is talking about. Always going to be an attorney. No, they want that come up money. They want that come up money. These officers never announced they were police officers. And then what we witnessed, Dexter got out of his car, unarmed, and was shot by the police. <laughs> Based on the COPA report that you all received this morning. What? Did we all just see the same, did we all just see the same video or not? I wanna just rewind it one second and see what he just said. And was shot by the police. Dexter got out of his car, and then what we witnessed, Dexter got out of his car. Did we all see the same video? What? Is this the same person? Is this the same video? Did we all not just see the police? Y'all wanted police body cams. We got police body cams. What I seen was gunshot, police running, get cover, defend themselves. Gunshot, police cover, gun, defend themselves. What are we talking about? Jesus Christ. And then what we witnessed, Dexter got out of his car, unarmed, and was shot by the police. Based on the COPA report that you all received this morning, 96 rounds were fired by these officers. Unarmed. I don't know. Maybe, I, maybe my eyes are seeing something different. Give me one second. I just want to make sure that I've seen it right. Open the door now. Open the door now. Open the door now. Okay. Maybe I'm off. Maybe I'm off. Maybe he was unarmed. Maybe he was just, maybe he threw a rock at everybody and I'm not familiar. But okay, let's continue. So let's say that again. 96 rounds were fired by these tactical officers. And what also happened is if you watch the end of the video, you see an officer military style executing Dexter while he laid by his vehicle, unarmed and helpless. Last Friday, I thought he had a pistol. Funeral. I thought he had, a, he didn't have a gun. He didn't have a gun. This family said their last goodbyes to Dexter. Now that this family has watched the video and seen the evidence, we are demanding action. We also believe that Mayor Brandon Johnson is committed to change. We believe that under his leadership, Chicago can change. He spoke with the family on Saturday afternoon. He committed to a full and transparent investigation. So where do we go next? We're asking the Johnson administration to commit to the consent decree. Sheila Betty and her team, Craig Futterman and his team have worked tirelessly to advance the consent decree. And there's been a total lack of compliance. We're specifically asking the mayor and police chief Snelling to disband these tactical units that have been terrorizing communities, folks in communities Jesus on the Christ. west and south sides. 
We're also asking that Superintendent Snelling strip the officers involved with this fatal and unjustified shooting. We're asking Chief Kirsten from COPA to continue her investigation. We're also asking, if you watch it, the objective video evidence that State's Attorney Kim Fox moved swiftly to get justice for this family in what we think there should be a criminal indictment against some. I can't, I can't pull it up on the other, ca on the other cameras. I can't pull it up on the other cameras and, and be able to show it here. Of these officers. We're also asking Mayor Johnson to work with government officials in Springfield to advance legislation related to disciplinary police actions. Keep those hearings public and in the open for all of us to see and witness. This family doesn't want this to happen to anyone else. This family also doesn't want any violence in this city based on this incident. What we know is what started on March 21st as a pretextual, unconstitutional, and unreasonable search, and then 96 shots later, and then three or four additional shots shot into Dexter is unimaginable. And that's why this family and we are here today. Dexter is not here because of the actions and inactions of this administration no, 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 no. Dexter is not here because of the actions of Dexter. Dexter is not here because of the actions of Dexter. I'm going to just call it straight now, straight for what it is. Dexter is not here because of the actions of Dexter. We can sit here. We can... We can sugar-coated, we can look at all of the different things and everything like that. But let me tell you something. This is a self-inflicted wound, flat out. People going to feel some type of way, oh, man, F the police, disband the police, ruin our communities ever, even more, let's get distracted for the upcoming election and all of this stuff. Look, bruh. Dexter ain't here because Dexter decided that Dexter didn't want to be here anymore. And Dexter was riding around with a pistol in his car with a poo shiesty mask on. And now we want to continue to have and hold everybody else accountable because this is a money grab. That, let's just look, call it for what it is. This right here is an ambulance chaser and a money grab. This is ambulance chasing and money grabbing right here. Everybody think that they kids should get a payout as a result of the stuff that they did. It's disgusting. It's absolutely positively disgusting. And until we start holding ourselves accountable, you can't then hold somebody else accountable to react into what it is that you riding, you riding around with a pistol what a shiesty mask on, refuse to comply, shoot out the window at a police officer, and then we getting mad and having a conversation about how they reacted. I know, I know. I'm a sellout for calling it what it is. I'm a bad guy. I Whatever. Call it what you want to. Teach your kids. Not to get caught up, not to be out here in these streets, not to be having guns and pistols, not to have shiesty masks on, not to be doing the things that they're not supposed to do. And then they can get home safely and they can be chilling with you. If y'all want to, y'all can go and watch the rest of the video. You're going to have to click I proceed, I comply, all of that stuff in order to watch the video and sign in on the police activity channel. 
Uh, I'll check out the rest of it for myself. But from what I see and from what the conversations are being had um, by, the, by, by these attorneys that can't wait to get a money grab, I don't feel sorry. I don't. I don't feel sorry. So unless y'all provide me with some additional information and evidence that allows for me to be able to see that he was just unjustly whatever, then I, I'll reserve the right to be able to change my mind. But until then, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. We can't have people out here being lawless and then trying to hold the police accountable for protecting the community. Not having it. Uh, celibate or celibate 2K boy. Shout out to my dog, J. Ben. Chris Moore says, play stupid. Yep, you said it. You just said it. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. You want to keep your kids safe? Nobody's. A, I ain't even going to go into it. Black Beauty says, why not just open a door? Poor guy. No, poor police officers that he, that he traumatized by shooting at. LLC says they were in plain clothes. Anton, if you're driving to Chicago, how would you know uh, if those people yelling with... This is what we doing. This is what we doing. This is where we going. <laughs> ah, this is what we doing. All right. I see where this is going. It's, it's already going to go left. All right. It's election time, reparations time, protest time. Michael Anderson says cap race had nothing to do with it. Check statistics. Nigga, please, says, re-fired multiple rounds, shot a cop, but the community worried about why was there five cops for a seatbelt violation. Side note, Pennsylvania versus MIMS 1977 gives cops the lawful order for you to exit your vehicle during any traffic stop. Let me give another round of applause for you. You can't shoot a cop. And then be sitting there having a conversation about what happened. Shout out to you, big dog. I appreciate you and thank you for holding us down. SS29 says, law is the law, folks. Wear your seatbelts. He could have gotten a ticket or warned, but he chose to play stupid games. No, he chose to shoot at the cops. He chose to shoot at the police officers. Shout out to my dog, call me Tazzy. Look, I get it. Cops do some questionable, questionable things. From time to time, but this ain't that. If you up the glizzy at the police, what you think gonna happen, Swiss cheese, is what happens. Absolutely. <laughs> Y'all gonna keep playing games. Y'all keep playing playing Call of Duty and thinking that it's gonna go up from there. No, you're gonna get 96 thrown at you. Real talk. Chase Barnes says, I need AD on my neighborhood watch committee. He is gonna tell you, <laughs> tell you behind if you messing up in public, he don't play. Real talk. Delta Fox in the building says, it's an election year and it's dangerous to misbehave while being black. If you're going to get skitty, pop, pop. And be used as a political tool to keep black people distracted, wear your seatbelt and don't be a nuisance. Agreed. Or be the next contestant on The Price is Right. Back for Back says, for the life of me, I can't see why they question what the police did. That's not a pillar of the community. That's a criminal. Oh. Oh, oh, now y'all starting to get in there. Ken J says he did get out the car. There's a longer video. Well, now we ain't got to worry about it no more. Well, Building Journey says, I sent you the full video version from Fox News. Okay, all right, y'all can go watch that. Victor Williams says, Anton, apparently there's a longer version soon where he got out the car according to the black and black crime criminal defenders in the chat. Okay, I know I'm about it. I'm about it. All right. Uh, YouTube Police Activity Channel Body Cam Number Three. That's what y'all can go and look at. Easy Money says uh, George Floyd Jr. Same playbook. Get ready. Chase Barnes is in the building. Says uh, that is so true. AD 2012, 2016, 2020, 2024. Usually the even years. Presidential election is when the ambulance chases roll out in full force. Sister. <laughs> Mr. A.D., are lawsuits for justice reparations rebranded? A form of it. A form of it. 
First thing that they do is they call that lawyer. Darnell says, so the cop shot himself? Nope. Antonio Watkins says, all officers need to leave Chicago, build a wall around the city, and let them figure it out. The lawyer is delusional. I agree. Let them, let them be for themselves. Um, Zach says, they will never hold Pookie accountable because he is a good person, and he's a basketball player, and he's for the community, and he likes going to his sister's job. But the people will pay in the end. Bag for bag says the same Dexter Reed that got arrested for theft and carrying an unregistered firearm. Oh, that don't matter. We're not worried about that. The only thing that matters is, is, is did he get shot 96 times. But Nate Valentine says Pookie's going to Pookie. Carlos Rico says we know this won't go anywhere with Dexter Reed case since Ben Crump wasn't there. I wouldn't doubt that Ben Crump is somewhere waiting in the wings. Like, let me get that case, big dog. Let me get that case up out of you. Dexter f the round and found out. Chris James says, uh, the egregious lies from Andrew Stroh. Appreciate you. Jamal Fowler says, all Dexter had to do was comply. He'd be alive. Nah, he didn't want to do that. We going out. We going out with an S on our chest. S on our chest. LLC. But Anton, you didn't answer the question though. How would you know those people in hoodies of multiple races <laughs> in the inner city of Chicago, women, police vests on, walking up to the car, a bunch of them, white girls, fit the description were cops and not robbers in Chicago. Really? I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for you. I don't know how to answer that question. I'm stumped. But I do appreciate you for supporting the platform. I'm absolutely stumped. I would have no idea what a plain clothes cop look like, especially white women in the hood with vests on and cargo pants telling me to roll down the window with, with, with body cams on. Body cams on, none of that. I wouldn't have a clue that they were playing close cops at all. Not at all. I would just be absolutely confused. I would have to figure it out. None of that. I would just, I would, I would, seriously, I, I wouldn't know. Anyways, while we're on a, on a subject of crime, we might as well go down this dark path and just go ahead and nuke the whole thing and throw it right on out the window. Ladies, my Mercedes. I heard that women is getting more evil out here in these streets. I heard that women are getting more evil out here in these streets. According to reports, a woman in the car takes out her boyfriend, throws her children out the car, and then takes herself out. One child left behind the older kid. You can't make this stuff up. When I told y'all today, that it was going to be a difficult show and we was going to have to go ahead and preface it by saying um, graphic, all of that stuff. See for yourself, bro. Triple murder. Uh, mother killed the boyfriend, pushed the daughter onto the freeway, and then that was it for her. These women, man, I'm telling you, bro, these women is crazy. Check it out. We're learning new details about a murder-suicide that left three people dead, including an eight-month-old baby. The family tragedy unfolding on Monday on three separate locations. Now we're seeing how the events unfolded hour by hour. It all started in Woodland Hills at 3.40 in the morning. The LAPD says the suspect, Danielle Johnson, got into an argument with her partner, Jalen Cheney, stabbing him to death. The mother then fled the scene with her two children. 50 minutes later, 4.30 a.m., Johnson was driving on the 405 freeway in Westchester when police say the girls were thrown out of the vehicle. If this bothers you, go ahead, take a minute. Go ahead, take a minute. I know it's a lot. I know that devils and demons is out here running around doing some, some, some insane stuff. Get into an argument with her boyfriend. Stab him up. Jump on the freeway. Take the daughters. Throw them out the window on the freeway. I'm dog. You can't make this up. Woman goes, 
stabs up her boyfriend, takes her kids, jump in the car, go on the freeway, throw the kids out the window on the freeway. The baby was hit by a car and killed. Half an hour later at 5 in the morning, Johnson was speeding in the city of Redondo Beach. She crashed into a tree and died. Our Leanne Suter has been closely following this story. Leanne, the, the sole survivor of this tragedy was the older sister. Absolutely, Mark. Heartbreaking details coming out about this horrific tragedy. That sole survivor, just nine years old, apparently witnessing almost all of the deadly violence. A deadly end to a trail of violence as the mother behind the wheel of this crumpled Porsche Cayenne is killed when she slammed into a Redondo Beach tree. 34-year-old Danielle Johnson is also accused of killing her live-in boyfriend at their apartment and her eight-month-old daughter when she threw the infant and her nine-year-old sister out of her car on the freeway. The suspect slowed the vehicle and opened the passenger door for her daughter and then told her to get out of the car. And when the daughter didn't do that, she then forcibly pushed her out of the vehicle in the middle of the freeway while moving, while the nine-year-old was holding the eight-month-old baby. The eight-month-old fell to the pavement and was struck and killed by a passing vehicle. The Y'all ready to throw this whole world away or no? We, we there yet? Have we gotten to the point? <sighs> Have we gotten to the point to where we can actually just throw it all away and just call on sweet baby Jesus, bring us the fire and the brimstone and just let it rain down? Just let it rain on down. Just go ahead and take it all out. Take it away, throw it away. Start just... just we not worthy. We genuinely is just not worthy of even being on this earth. We not even worthy. It don't even matter. A nine-year-old holding an eight-month-old baby, pushed him out onto the freeway. Baby falls, get hit, and ran over by another car. Now imagine a person that hit the baby and run over the baby with the car. You driving down the freeway, you going to work in the morning, next thing you know, you hit a baby. Come on, come on, send the fire and brimstone, bro. Nine-year-old managed to make it to the shoulder with moderate injuries. A horrific ending to deadly violence that began hours earlier for the sole survivor. Eyewitness News has learned the nine-year-old witnessed her mother stab her live-in boyfriend, 29-year-old Jalen Cheney, to death in their Woodland Hills apartment. That little girl obviously saw more than she ever should have seen in any, any life yesterday. So I just hope someone's taking care of her because she's going to need it. Investigators say Johnson killed Cheney early Monday morning after a fight that rammed the garage gate as she fled with her daughters. Their door was wide open. There was blood on the floor leading into their apartment and then a trail of it in the hallway leading up to the elevator and I saw some blood on the walls. A short time later, detectives say Johnson pushed her daughters out of her car on the 405 and drove away. Her final act taking her own life at more than 100 miles per hour. Detectives now piecing together the trail of violence and searching for a motive. Given that the only witness we really have to this crime now is a nine-year-old girl, there's just very little information we have other than there was a verbal altercation that turned violent and it ended in tragedy. The nine-year-old now in the care of the Department of Children's Services. Her father lives out of state. It's unclear if Cheney was the father of the eight-month-old who died. So she was a baby mama. Let me just hear this last part one more time. Her father lives out of The nine-year-old now in the care of the Department of Children's Services. Her father lives out of state. It's unclear if Cheney was the father of the eight-month-old who died. So let's paint the whole picture now. Because I always say, and I just got to be real. I got to be real. Baby mama living boyfriend, father out of state, father probably at work, step baby daddy comes in, get stabbed up, original father get a phone call, 
hey, we found your daughter with minor injuries on the freeway after she got pushed out of the car and witnessed, you, witnessed the mama stab up the live-in boyfriend, the step crash dummy, stabbed him up, and then they pushed the other kid out and the baby got ran over. Hey, your daughter is going to have a take. Your daughter going to have to deal with a lifetime, a lifetime of trauma, therapy, and they're never going to be able to unsee what they saw at this young age that no child should ever be subjected to. They're never going to be able to unsee what they saw. Broken families, broken people, demonic culture, do what you want to do, live how you want to live, no respect for life, no respect for God, no respect for yourself, don't even care about your children. Don't even care about your own children. Monsters. Savages. Evil. You can't tell me that demonic spirits don't. It's not real. And so when I see people on these live streams a lot of times and they justify in the mindset and the behavior behind what we see happening in the culture and society, for me, it's a no-go. Don't sit here and tell me that the good people are supposed to put their microphones down and let the demons continue to run rampant and give bad advice and continue to perpetuate negative behavior and spread these negative spirits. I'm not having it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You're not going to tell me that we supposed to be quiet while the rest of y'all go out here and run the country amok and that's the end of the conversation. I'm not going to do it. Nope. Nope. Savages everywhere. Monsters everywhere. People taking over the culture and continuing to do the worst things to their own people and their own children. You don't even respect yourself. It's horrible. It's an absolute horrible tragedy. And it's funny because I had another clip that I was going to play with this, but I decided that I don't want to because it's already bad enough. And we've already had enough of this nonsense already today. And how much more can we take? How much more can we take? How much more are we supposed to subject ourselves to? Let me read some of the super chats. We're gonna move over into something a little bit lighter. Got to lighten it up a little bit. Laugh at some people. Uh, Nigga, please, says Chicagoans know what CPD look like. Get real. <laughs> now, listen, they looking for an out. Everybody looking for an out. Michael Anderson says, I know a black judge personally. Comply. You live. <laughs> and you can get out on a $100 bond. Uh, black Beauty says, I truly think pharmaceuticals has the American people unraveling. Chris Simmons is in the building. Shout out to Chris says, you know, Harvard professor Roland Fryer got in so much trouble for publishing that he couldn't find any bias in racial police shooting, uh, shootings. He actually thought and assumed he would find it against blacks and was shocked. You mean he did the research and he couldn't find anything? I don't know. I don't know. IDK 3000 says Anton waited until women uh, try to justify, justify this when they found out the boyfriend cheated. So that constitutes stabbing and throwing your children out the window? Okay, okay. Well, at least we always got Eric Adams to laugh at. No? Listen, it's a lot going on in New York. Remember when the workers is, is running around and now the gig worker is, is making $20 an hour and they complaining that they ain't got no tips? Hey, imagine, imagine that you protested to make $20 an hour, right? And now that you're making $20 an hour, you're complaining that you're not getting no tips. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Uh, first and foremost, uh, let's talk about this. And then we got new migrant shelters that's opening over in New York. Check it out. Well, supposed to be a big win for delivery workers in New York City. But a new law requiring that they be paid a certain wage has come with some unintended consequences. One of them being that they actually earn fewer tips. All right, Fox 5's Jessica Formoso spoke with a New York City council member who's now trying. 
Hey, she kind of bad, though, on the low, though. I'm sorry. I just got an eye for talent. I just got an eye for talent. She don't even deserve to be up there in New York. She deserved to be down here in Detroit and in Miami. <laughs> New York, hey, New York is, they competing. When it comes to the women and when it comes to the news anchors and the ladies that they keep front and center, I ain't even going to cap. They out here competing. They competing, competing. Go ahead then, baby girl. To reverse this trend. As of last week, app-based food delivery workers are getting $19.56 an hour. The pay increase, a big win for deliveristas, the delivery men and women who have been pushing for higher wages. But with the bump in pay came a reduction in tips. I got when you, the minimum wages went into effect, the tipping options were removed at checkout as a disincentive and discouraging people from tipping. But also, I think this is also done in retaliation for deliveristas who won the minimum wage uh, battle. Council member Sean Abreu is proposing a bill that won't make it harder to tip on food delivery apps. It's a two measure bill, one to allow app users to tip at checkout and two to set a minimum gratuity of 10% of an order's total. It's not what? Man, y'all have just literally lost y'all mind, bro. Y'all have literally lost y'all mind. They are introducing a bill. Listen, not only do you already get $20 an hour minimum, now they're introducing a bill that makes it to where you have to tip 10% minimum by default inside of the app. Okay, wait. I've always believed in tipping because I understood the American culture and I've always said that a lot of these servers and stuff like that, they only getting like $1 and $2 an hour and so they depend on the tips. And it's based off of their performance. So if they do a good job, then they get a tip. And I've always depended on a lot of the people to make sure that they support me based off of the fact that I tip good, right? And so I never understood why people come over into the country and they would say, oh, no, they should pay their workers a livable wage. Okay, cool. Well, New York has now legislated it, which I don't agree with. New York has legislated it to where, all right, now they get $20 an hour minimum and they riding their bikes and they riding on mopeds, which means they save on gas, they save on insurance, they save on tires, they save on the maintenance and the wear and tear on your car. And now they're trying to introduce le legislation and say not only that, you have to tip them on top of it. Now, I disagree with that. I disagree with it 100%. This is stupid. This is absolutely stupid. You telling me we got a tip? We got a tip? What kind of nonsense is this? This is crazy, bro. Two to set a minimum gratuity of 10% of an order's total. It's not a requirement to tip. And people can exercise their choice as consumers. And this comes at no cost to employers. He don't even speak English. He said, Moncano, 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 Moncano. He don't even speak English. Come on, man. These people don't even speak English. No hablo English. And you telling me what we got to do? Shh. No hablo English. You don't even know. You don't even, you can't even talk to me. I can't even ask you, hey, what happened to my order, bro? What are y'all doing over there? Angel has been delivering for two months and says he depends on those tips. Same goes for Sebastian Garcia. Yo, these is migrants, man. These is migrants, bro. I don't know what y'all talking about. Straight up. Real talk. Man, this is crazy, bro. This is absolutely insane. It's crazy and it's disrespectful. It's disrespectful. I've been working since 6 a.m. It's now 3 p.m. and I've only made $63. DoorDash made its changes in December. The option to tip in no the fault. DoorDash app is now after checkout. In a statement to Fox 5, it says, in order to better balance the impact of these new costs, this change comes as a recommendation by the New York City Department of Consumer and Worker Protection and has been done to help ensure our platform remains affordable for all New Yorkers.
A spokesperson for Uber Eats says, haven't seen the bill yet, but seems odd the council member wants to require New Yorkers to tip delivery workers that make $20 an hour by law and not those that make $10.65 by law. See so in addition to that, in addition to the fact that New York is creating these laws that uh, they're hoping that helps get Eric Adams elected again, uh, they've also opened a new migrant shelter. So you know how housing is hard to find and, you know, they're trying to look for real estate because it ain't going nowhere. And so they build up in New York instead of out because every single crack and crevice in New York is already owned by everybody in New York. Yeah. Well, Brooklyn is opening a new migrant shelter. Check it out. A controversial new migrant shelter opens at a former manufacturing building in Gowanus, Brooklyn. The state says the site should be tested for underground contaminants, but the city says that it meets the regulations to become a shelter. All right, Fox 5's Morgan McKay joins us now in studio with a closer look at the details of what's going on there. Morgan. Yes, Stephen Natasha, this shelter site, along with around 300 other properties in that area, have been marked by the state for testing to see if there are underground contaminants. But the city says that the shelter site passed its inspection and the state test is not not required for them to open. It's one of the most recent migrant shelter sites to open. The Guana shelter located in Brooklyn opened its doors starting last Wednesday and has a capacity to house up to 400 migrant men. The former manufacturing. I don't want to be nowhere worse a bunch of men. I'm going to just be honest with you, bro. I don't want to be hanging out nowhere where it's a bunch of men uh, talking about what we got going on today. Nope. Nope, I don't want to be nowhere where it's a bunch of hard legs having a good time talking about, hey, man, what we got going on today? Nope. Count me out, bro. Count me out, big dog. I'm straight. I'm good. 400 men. Musty. Just came over from the border. No documentation. Nah, I'm good, big dog. I'm going to pass on that. I'm gonna pass on that big bro. The building is located next to the Guanas Canal, one of the most heavily contaminated water bodies in the nation. The building is also next to a vacant lot that used to house a gas manufacturing plant. As a result, the State Department of Environmental Conservation has listed the site as one of the properties the agency intends to test to see if underground contaminants are still present in the soil. The health and safety of everyone in our care is, is always sort of the top, uh, the top priority. City Hall defending the use of the site on Tuesday, saying that the shelter meets local and state regulations and passed an inspection from the State Office of Temporary and Disability Assistance. On top of that, the city says that the landlord of the building conducted a soil vapor intrusion test and found no indication there are current health risks to the people living there. We are also working with the State Department of Envir Environmental Conservation to schedule an additional soil vapor intrusion test at this site, which is not mandatory testing. Neighborhood residents who are part of the Third Street Block Association have filed a lawsuit against the city over the use of the site as a shelter. In a statement, the group said, quote, the use of this property without testing and remediation violates New York City zoning rules and New York State environmental standards and places all residents and migrants in danger and exposes the city to long-term liability that taxpayers will be responsible for. To date, more than 189,000 migrants have passed through New York City since the spring of 2022. And the city has that. opened more than 200 temporary shelter sites. Last week, uh, 1,500 migrants have come, which means that there's a slight bit of an uptick that we're seeing, so we're always paying attention to that. And Politico breaking news just moments ago that New York City will be severing ties with DACO and is declining to renew its contract with this controversial migrant services provider. So, there's your New York news. Uh, tip, tip and gig workers is making $20 an hour. And then also on top of that, and they finessing. Y'all know that they finessing, right? This girl is kind of cute. I like her. I've seen her before. This is they finessing. So basically, what they do is they find somebody else that's not a gig worker. They put it in their name if they're not a uh, documented worker. They actually get. And, and I'm gonna tell you what the real finesse is. And a lot of people are not familiar with this, but this is how they finessing. A lot of times they'll find an undocumented worker, or somebody knows a bunch of undocumented workers that's willing to get to that bag, right? They're willing to work. 
And then you wonder and you say, wait a minute, this guy said that he's been up since 3 a.m. and it's 6 p.m. And how come he's only made 60 something dollars an hour? Well, a lot of times those workers depend on tips. And the reason that they depend on tips is because the person who they're operating under. Have y'all ever ordered DoorDash? Have y'all ever ordered Grubhub? Have you ever jumped into an Uber and it was a girl, but it was really a guy or it was a guy and it was really a girl and they actually operating under somebody else's thing? That's what happens. And so they set it up under somebody else's name. You come up and they start delivering your stuff. And what's really happening is that because somebody else's name is legal and they're able to use their actual identity in order to sign up on the application itself, they then use that in order to sign up a bunch of other people. And then those people are doing all of the deliveries and they basically getting the cut of it. And so what happens is those people are still working under a, 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 a certain amount that they're getting paid. And then somebody else is getting a bigger cut of it, and that's how they finesse you through the app. There you go. There's the finesse. There's the finesse. That's why they don't have to be no English, because the only thing that they got to do is they got to know how to be able to navigate through this application. They got to know how to read it. They got to have it on their phone, and then they can go and deliver wherever it is that they're delivering it to. This is how they work it. This is how they getting it. This is how they busting it down. Go to Miami. Go to Miami. Miami's gig workers are the most efficient gig workers. They sublet in employment. That's correct. Miami gig workers are some of the most efficient gig workers that I've ever seen in my life. And part of the reason that they're so efficient is because they're all doing the same thing that they're doing in New York, except in New York, weather is worse. But Miami gig workers is all on mopeds, so they don't have the same cost as you. So they're able to outsource, get around quicker, and they going through traffic and doing all of the stuff. Most of them don't even speak English, but they'll get you your food fast as hell. Y'all really want to have a, because they don't, of course they're not going to say this. They're not going to say this on the major networks. They're not going to have this conversation with you. They're not going to tell you how these gig workers is being able to get over what the real finesse is, how businesses are really able to operate. Hey, this person got an EBT card and they over there funding a, restaurant and they paying with all they have a customers paying with cash so that they can minimize the amount of money that the irs knows but the irs really wants everybody to start going through and go cashless because there's so many so much money that's going out of the coffers and taxes because people are operating under the cash-based system and the united states of america don't want to go away from the cash-based system because it allows for us to be able to circle listen they don't want to have these real conversations these is the real conversations you think that everybody that's over here operating has been over here for an extended period of time, even though they didn't just recently cross the border, that they just operating above board? No, they figuring it out. They finessing. They figuring it out. But it's better than what they came from. It's better than what they came from. No hablo ingle, but I got your food, day. Eh? You know what I'm saying? Anyways, let me read some of the super chats, and then we're going to go over into our last thing uh, before my DoorDash get here. Shout out to DoorDash. One word, says Ash, feminism. Modern Western women are out of control. Women in this country need to get back to the basics. Kevin Samuels, rest in peace, told the ladies, your husband is your baby daddy. Stop wreaking the homes. Stop wrecking the homes. <laughs> Shout out to my dog, Ash. I appreciate you, big dog, for holding me down. Biz Q says, uh, Uber, Lyft, leave Minneapolis due to the new wage policy. Ooh. So now y'all can get price gouged with the new cabs again. I heard they got a huge Somalian population over there in Minneapolis, and it's growing even bigger. Messi says, I got a tip for him. Don't eat yellow snow. <laughs> Devastator says, good thing I always pick my food up myself. No, I ain't doing that. Instacart, DoorDash. I'm waiting on my stuff right now. You know what I'm saying? Ordered it before the show was over. Anyways, let's continue. So, thought we'd end this on something a little bit interesting which I haven't seen it, but I've seen it play out, or I'm sorry, I've seen it pop up on my timeline. Shout out to Steven. I'm going to read that super chat shortly. Sage Steel. How many of y'all are familiar with Sage Steel? Y'all not familiar with Sage Steel? Sage Steel uh, was a commentator, a sports commentator, and I guess you could say an analyst. You could say all of that, because over there at ESPN, so many people wear different hats. But she actually worked for Disney at ESPN. Um, and she's basically on with Tucker Carlson. Now, what she winds up saying, according to what's listed in the description of the video, is that white men 
White men have no voice over at ESPN. Let me say that again. She said, white men, boy, is y are y'all turning racism on his head or no? Are y'all turning racism on his head or no? Reverse racism. She said, white men don't even have a voice at ESPN. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Uh, let's see what Sage had to say sitting down with Tucker Carlson. I, looking back, it's obvious that some of the worst things are some of the best things. Obviously, a horrible experience for you at ESPN, but on some level, aren't you glad you're gone? Oh. Um, glad and glad I'm gone are kind of two different things. I mean, at the end of the day, yes. Um, I'm still heartbroken that it happened the way it did. Yes. It didn't have to. Yes. And I, again, I loved what I did, and it took me years to get there, and it was super hard to stay there. Yeah. Not the most uh, welcoming, nurturing place I where they're, you're being uplifted and, and encouraged and um, just even get, given constructive criticism to continue to get better. Right. Um, but I did it, damn it. Yeah. And um, I, I'm, I'm glad because I can finally speak without being in fear. Yeah. Knowing again that like it's it's a lot bigger than me. I, I thought through the years, I was just following my dream. And then along the way, you know, I had young women reaching out and saying, oh my God. Look at Gene Cole. You see how Gene Cole don't know what he's talking about? He said, white men on ESPN. Make it make sense. What's their name? Did you know that ESPN was owned by Disney and Disney was a publicly traded company? <laughs> Who are these white men that own ESPN that you see that you say and you speak of do y'all just be typing stuff sometimes or do y'all think about what you say before you say it are y'all really familiar with how publicly traded companies operate or you just be typing it in and you just want to be part of the victim Olympics I'm just curious who are these white men that own ESPN that I am not familiar with hmm Let's continue. Gosh, you know, back in the day, my bosses said, you have to straighten your hair and you can't, you can't look, that's not what anchors on TV look like, especially national TV, you know? And so I have young girls saying, you're the first woman I saw that just owned your hair and didn't straighten and have the anchor bob and all that. Yeah. So I, I just was talking about sports, like naive, but I didn't realize that I was being an example right. for other young women out there and, and black women and just the diversity part. And so then when I realized that, um, what an honor, you know? So I, I'm sad that, that I don't have that platform to continue to do that, but I did it for almost 17 years. Yeah. And now I'm excited at the potential of doing it. I mean, look, I get to talk to Tucker Carlson where other people who, who have no idea who I am will see me and forget about this stuff. I'm just saying about, about being true to who we are and, and standing and, up for what we believe in. And not lying. No, I totally I did agree. have to lie. I had to lie a lot yeah. about things that I, I didn't agree with that we were doing on the air. Like, tell me. Well, to, to not be able to ask specific questions about, you know, when we had athletes all of a sudden collapse. LeBron's son. He's a young man. Mm -hmm. Healthiest possible. Exactly. Um, that's one example, but to not be able to go there and ask they, those they, questions. They wouldn't let you ask. Oh, no, and it wasn't just me. It was other pieces that were done on outside the lines about it. But to me, I don't care if you're LeBron's son or if you're my neighbor. Like, you're a young man in particular because we there's some science behind that. I know we don't like the science word now, but there's no, some right. science behind that, right? And so if an 18-year-old kid is suddenly collapsing. Especially a boy. That's right. Yeah, if I'm his mother... I'm asking, okay, did he collapse because it was raining today versus sunny? Like any potential reason for of this course, sudden collapse, the variables, you're yeah. gonna ask as a journalist. When you look at the decisions Disney has made for many years, despite it really affecting their bottom line, right? right. They've continued recently, uh, Bob Iger came out, I think in that SEC filing, admitting, acknowledging that they went too woke in many areas. Uh Do y'all know who Bob Iger is? Some of y'all are because y'all are part of the bag chaser. Shout out to the Patreon members. Bob Iger is the CEO, the acting CEO who did retire and then came back, um, is the CEO of Disney that obviously owns ESPN. 
And Bob Iger is admitting now that there is a large conglomerate of people that is divesting themselves from Disney and Disney platform and Disney movies and all of that. She said that Bob Iger admitted that they went too woke. And you know what they say? You go woke, you go broke. Um, and look at what's happened um, with the the what used to be incredible content that Disney used to put out, yes. you know, and look what's happened and look at the numbers and the well, look at ESPN and the numbers there. I mean, that's a, a part of my question. Did you do you think you got out in retrospect at the right time? Oh, yeah. I mean, do you think ESPN will be a force in sports news in 10 years? You know, I think, well, it all goes back to the rights deals. Um, yeah. And because I know I hear all the time on social media that the only reason that they watch ESPN is because you know, they've got the games. Champions, yeah. they have the ga games, they have the live broadcasts and the ESPN knows that, which is why they've tried to create other revenue streams and, you know, digital and, um, you know, the ESPN. ESPN is dying. Yes. It's just as flat out. Listen, I don't care how much Stephen A. Smith say we're still at the top of the ratings. So many content creators, content creators in general are unleashed and they're funded differently, and they funding themselves sometimes. Think about what it is, what it is. I would rather watch Cameron and Mace do a breakdown of Jordan Poole than I would rather see a bunch of women on a diversity, equity, and inclusion team breaking down an ESPN game. Flat out. I can't even talk to the referees in the NBA the way that I used to talk to the referees in the NBA. The guy referees, they used to take it. They used to be like, yeah, man, anti- one of them even came up and he introduced himself to me. He said, oh, my God, what's going on, Anton from Anton? I love you, bro. I love what you got going on. The women referees, oh, my God, I can't believe that she made that call. She be looking at you ready to throw you off. Referees got a lot of power at these games. I'm telling you. Look, dog, referees, not players. Referees can get you banned from the building. They can get you throughout of the whole game. And them women referees, they be emotional. Telling you. Women referees, they be out of control. Hey, girl, I like it. I like the way you blew the whistle. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Because if you go to enough games, you see some of the same referees over and over and over again a lot of times. Um, I had went to a game one time, and then I jumped on a plane to go over to Dallas the last time I hit Dallas, and I wind up sitting next to a, uh, the referee that had just ref the game previously. And he was like, hey, man, you want to go to a Dallas game? I didn't have it in my capacity. I think there was a time that I actually went and did Real Life Street Stars. Real life street stars is when I went to Dallas and he was like, hey man, you wanna, uh, nah, I, I ain't gonna be able to do it. I'm in here and get in and get out. You know what I'm saying? But you see some of the same referees and they cool and they notice you or whatever, but them women referees, they be having their head on them. Hey man, I can't believe that you, you just go ahead and sit back. Acting like you ain't pay all that money for them tickets. <laughs> Plus, which hasn't done great. Disney Plus has not done great. Yeah. Um, and so people feel it. Again, people don't come to ESPN to talk politics. But hey, it's not just ESPN. The leagues have done it. Look at what the NBA has done and kind of shoving it down your throats. And oh, then on yeah. the courts, it says Black Lives Matter um, still in some places. And it's like, wait, well, are we not paying attention to what we now know factually about Black Lives Matter? So um, I'm, I'm just never surprised anymore. My point is, just because I'm not surprised doesn't mean I give up. We give up, those of us who aren't afraid anymore. If we give up, I feel like we're complicit. Did any, uh, that's for certain, you're exactly right there, I think. Um, did any other anchors express empathy, come, you know, off offline, privately? There were a few, there, there were definitely a few, and um, anchors or reporters or analysts for sure. There's a lot of people who, who feel the way I feel about many things. Um, a lot of men who work there who are on air who wrote and said um you know i i don't know that it's courage but they said i wish i had the courage that you have oh that's so embarrassing <laughs> i mean come on come on Get listen the mo the 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 beginning of the end for me 
I already knew that the league had been watered down and all of this stuff. The beginning of the end for me, which started giving me the, the itch to walk away, which I'm really, like, disgusted, I'm done, was when I started seeing they get extra woke when they got that pandemic and they had to play in and they started putting Black Lives Matters on the court. Everybody was kneeling and then they started having all of them names on the back of their jerseys. I said, what is this? I said, I thought sports was supposed to unite us. No matter how different that you are, no matter what neighborhood that you live in, right? No matter what color that you are, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. Hold on, man. Hello. Hey, Todd, this is your dad. How are you? I'm doing well. How you doing? I'm super, but I'm working on it. Okay. All right. That's what's up. So uh, you, you coming up to deliver the, the order? Okay, thank you, my friend. I appreciate you. My pleasure. See you in a few minutes. All right, bye. Um, sports is supposed to unite us. It's supposed to bring us together. It's supposed to be the, the thing that breaks the barriers between us. It don't matter if you, where you work at. You could be an entrepreneur. You can be an executive. You can be a man, a woman, a kid, or whatever. It doesn't matter what you are. It's supposed to be the thing that takes us away from the stuff that we argue about every day and we go out and we compete for. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, we all rooting for the same team. We going back and forth. We laughing. This white guy right here, he may not even necessarily care for what it is that you do for a living or what your political affiliation is, but we're united in the idea that we're rooting for this team because we're, we're using entertainment as a way to distract us from what we got to go back and do the next morning. And I said, you said Kaepernick started it, the new movement. It didn't for me. Kaepernick was just a talking point. It was something for me to talk about on social media because I wasn't going to, I wasn't a 49ers fan or anything like that anyway. But when I started seeing all of this wokeness and all of this stuff and then Dwayne Wade started having a voice, I said, I didn't come to hear what Dwayne Wade had to say. I came to watch Dwayne Wade play. That was the beginning of the end for me. That was the beginning of the end. I actually had canceled my seats, and it was during the pandemic, and then they wound up getting me back because I had a really great representative. But this year, I said, I'm done, bro. I can't do it. That's some dignity, right? I mean. I, I agree. Grow a pair. Yeah. You know? um, and at the same time, I do try to put myself in their shoes. No, I get it. I... As white men. Yeah, no, I get it. When you don't have endless money and you have a family to support, um, white men are not allowed to have a voice. Ooh. She said, listen, you can say what you want to say. You think it's your skin color that's going to get you by? It's not. She said, white men that ain't got no money or they depending on the same thing that you depending on in order to be able to feed their family, they shut up, just like the black men do. They shut up. And they do their job. They do what they're being paid to do. She said it. She said, listen, it was white men that work with me as broadcasters and all of this other type of stuff. And they was like, ooh, I wish you had the courage that you got. Because at the end of the day, when you got to feed your family and you need that paycheck and you you depending on this system and you need your health care coverage and your benefits and you're trying to get your contract renewed for next year, you're going to do the same thing that everybody else do. You know why? Because it's a class situation. It's not race. It's a class war. It's not race. And when you don't have resources like you think you do, and I know a lot of y'all see a white man walking down the street and say, oh, my God, he got white privilege. She's a Karen. Nope. Nope. They're trying to feed their family and keep their family together the same way that you are. The same way that you are. And, and, and that part of the industry. And so I understand the fear, but I also see black men and people who are allowed to say much whatever they want quite often um, on social media at ESPN who have daughters who are athletes who are silent. And I know damn well that they're not letting a guy, a biological male, 
play against their daughter on the volleyball of court. Of course not. But they're silent. And so why I think that? Well, I, I, I think it just goes back to um, the woke. But I mean, if like Michael Wilbon, you know, or whatever, someone who's whom I love. Yeah, yeah. But we are complete. Wilbon. We think completely differently on everything. But uh, then, <laughs> then Wilbon's views may be totally sincere. But like, if someone who's established and made some dough, it's really you can say whatever you want. Why don't they? I, I, I think it's this. Um, because you can't say I what you want. With, you want to keep as your a job. Young woman and middle-aged woman for years. It's that that fear of being disliked and attacked. Yeah. So these big strong tough football players you know yeah and nba players who have millions of dollars in the bank who are now analysts especially in the african-american community they like broke. i know for the broke. most part with this topic of transgender this in sports yeah. issue uh -uh. we're they're on not, the same page they're not into it at all hell no yeah but they're silent and to me that's the worst thing is when um they know and they they can afford to speak up Again, no, it's never against they there for the a job just like you are. It's in support of women. Of and if we course. focus on that, so I actually have lost a ton of respect for a lot of those people because they just go like this. Nah, that's not what it is. Everybody trying to feed their family and they trying to keep a job just like you, baby. Don't lose respect. Don't lose respect because you don't know what their situation is. You don't know what they're dealing with at home. You don't know why they're working so hard. Don't lose respect because you're saying that they silent. They there to do a job just like you. And they being quiet just like you. And I don't care if they are white. Let me tell you something. White men, black men, all of them know that they expendable and they one paycheck away from trying to figure it out just like you. You keep counting pockets. I think that that's another thing that we do wrong. That's another thing that we do wrong. We count each other's pockets and we think that, oh, man, you you did this or you did that. You have the ability to do it. You don't know what that man got going on. You don't have a clue what that man got going on. They trying to figure it out just like you. Some things I agree with her on. Other things, not so much. I don't know. Thought it would be interesting to end the show with something a little bit different. I always look for stuff different to be able to have a conversation about um, before we get out of here. Let me read a couple of more of these Super Chats. Hold on one second. Hello. Hey, yes, uh, I believe I'm in the garage, but I'm not sure which door to go in. You in the garage? You in the back, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, you could just come in, the, come, in, come in through the back doors and you can come up through the elevator. Oh, okay. Just making sure I saw like an arrow pointing somewhere else. No, nah, you... Hold on. You see the security guard down there? Yeah. All right, yeah, just tell the, tell the security guard that you're coming up to give me my stuff, and then you can come from there. Sounds good. I'll come up the elevator now. All right, thank you. All right, let me read some of these super chats, and then I'll get y'all popping, get y'all up out of here for the day. Steve on. Shout out to Steve and my dog out there overseas. Said Anton is preaching today. I appreciate you. Enforcer 2K9 says former Sacramento Kings broadcaster Grant Napier was fired for saying all lives matter every single one on Twitter. See? And then you lose a bag. I want all of my money. I want all of my income. I don't want just some of it. I want all of it. JBZ, you'll be my personal dasher. JBZ says start following you a year ago and I love how you tell it like it is. I send your content to my 17-year-old all the time. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. We're going to run it up, all right? Uh, the name is Joe. The name Joe says, Sage Steel looks good. Are you in a Sage Steel? You in a little bit of a Sage? Uh, sister says, Mr. AD, how can she lose respect for men when she sat on the same bench complicit for 17 years? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You can't have a different standard for them than you have for yourself just because you think that they made a lot of money. You got to keep it G across the board. You know what I'm saying? All right. So let me make sure that we got everything good on this side. So I always like to acknowledge the people. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for always holding me down, always adding value into my life, making sure that you guys are absolutely positively awesome. And... um. 
You can come in, big dog. There you go. Here's some extra, bro. Yeah. I got you, big dog. Absolutely. I appreciate you, bro. Um, And I'm going to get y'all up out of here for the day. Thank you, bro. Make sure that you guys um, tap into the Patreon link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Also, on top of that, we got a live stream tonight, Wednesday night on the Anton Daniels channel, all right? I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I need y'all to do me one more favor before we get up out of here. Make sure you share this with your family and friends. We don't want to be successful by ourselves. I love you. I appreciate you. Phenomenal show. It's going to be even better tonight. I'll holler at y'all later. Peace.